Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in this particular video, we are going to talk about predictive optimization in Databricks. So when you talk about predictive optimization, it enhances the performance of your Unity Catalog Managed Table. So remember that it enhances the performance of only managed tables, not the external tables by intelligently optimizing the data layouts, leading to significant improvements in the query performance and reduction in the storage cost. So what it exactly does is, now there is a managed table in the Unity catalog. Databricks, uh, you know, with the help of AI, it tries to identify what are your query patterns? How is user querying the data? What are the where clauses that a user is trying to put in to query that particular data? Now, based on that data patterns, based on the patterns that it has seen, it tries to optimize your uh, tables so that the query performance increases for you, right? So that is what it is all about. And it is done by the Databricks itself so that you guys can only focus on loading the data and don't have to worry about the optimization part of it. However, it works only with the managed tables. So predictive optimization automates the table management by leveraging Unity Catalog and the data intelligence platform. Right. What it does is it enables compaction, liquid clustering and the vacuum. So all three of them are the optimization techniques that we usually perform. We run a separate job all together, which, uh, you know, applies compaction, liquid clustering and vacuum. I have described all three of them in detail in my separate videos as well. You guys can go back and check it. So when you talk about liquid clustering, you know, this technique incrementally clusters incoming data, enabling optimal data layout and efficient data skipping. So liquid clustering doesn't work for the streaming data, but yeah, so it tries to behind the scene, it tries to enable the liquid clustering for your managed tables. It enables the compaction and similarly, it also runs vacuum on your tables. So that is what predictive optimization actually does. So predictive optimization eliminates the need for manual and repetitive table optimization tasks. So because earlier we were doing these tasks by, you know, manually having a job, which is running maybe every weekend or every month, depending upon your data size. And we used to run those jobs, which used to help us in optimizing the tables. But this one, Databricks is doing for you. Now it has, you know, this snippets, uh, you know, I have got from the Databricks documentation itself. So if you look at these snippets, uh, it is claimed that it improves the storage cost by 2x. And similarly, it enhances the query performance by 20x. So that is what, you know, their claim is. So let's go to the Databricks documentation. Uh, let's go to the Databricks uh, uh, workspace itself and I'll show you how to enable it in the first place because when you create it, it might not be enabled by default. So whenever you go to your Databricks workspace, if you click on the top right side and you have the account admin privileges, you will be able to go to this manage account option, right? So if you click on this, you will land into this account console page. Now, the moment you go here, you will see uh, an option of settings. So please go to this particular option and you will see an uh, another option for feature enablement. So the moment you go here, you will see there are a couple of options which are available, which is like predictive optimization. So you need to go here and enable it. So right now it's uh, enabled for me and you can also see that it is disabled by default. Okay, so Databricks intelligently optimizes your Unity Catalog managed tables for performance and cost effectiveness. And that is how it gets enabled. Also, when I talk about the, uh, you know, managed table, just to give you a brief overview, but you, uh, but, but I guess you already know it if you have been watching my previous videos. So if you see this taxi underscore EXT, so if I go to the details, so you can see here the type is external. So this is an external table. And if you see here, whenever this table is created, location is mentioned specifically for it when a location is mentioned then this is an external table so for example if i go on how this table was created so if you see this create table sample data catalog ext default taxi ext location so this is how i have specified the location that i want to specifically create this table at this location and then I ended up creating an external table for it. And that is what you see it. Now, even if I go to my storage account, so this is the location one where I created my external table. 
and you can see taxi and here is my parquet and my delta table uh, eventually right my parquet file for the delta table so this is where i have created my external table and this is how you create an external table as well but now if you go to this taxi table and if i go to the details you see this is a managed table now the moment you see this managed table you see some random you know location for it now this location if you see when i created this catalog so by default at the catalog level itself i have mentioned that okay this is my meta store id but my storage root location is this because this is the place where i want to store my data okay this is the storage root means this is the location where i want to store my data and then if you go to the taxi when i created this table let me show you so when i created this table i did not specify any location create table sample data catalog ext default taxi as select start from this particular table but you see that there is no location specified so there is a clear difference on how these tables are created now there is no location which is specified so this is considered as a managed table underlining data files are managed by the databricks managed means managed simply means here that the underlining data files are managed by the databricks itself so the moment i do it by default if you go to these details now this storage location i have defined that hey whatever tables are created under this catalog i want to have this as a root location so it will use that but inside it wherever it is placing the data that is managed by databricks so you have seen that it has created a folder called as underscore underscore unity storage catalogs and this is the place if you go here you can see that this is a folder and inside it it has created my table now this is a managed table this is where it will uh, optimize but it will not optimize my the second table where which is an external table the first one is a managed table and the second one is an external table so that is how the concept actually works uh, so i hope you understood this you know how predictive optimization can be used if you guys are using managed table so thank you so much for being till here do remember to like share and subscribe to my channel